Okay guys, so what we're doing now, we're going to do the check my progress. So you should have already completed pages 605 and 606. And now we'll go through them. Remember, your pencil needs to be put away, your erasers need to be put away. All that should be out is your check my progress and your red pen. Remember, just like normal, as I'm, as I'm checking on the board, you need to be correcting if you need to. If you got it wrong, make sure that you correct. If I write anything extra that you did not have, like if I write examples, you may do that too. I will tell you when it's not something that is counted incorrect. Okay, so first things first, if you did not write your name, number, and date at the top, go ahead and write that with your red pen. Okay, remember if I'm going too fast, pause it. If you miss something, rewind it, just don't fast forward. Okay, so first we're doing the vocabulary check. The directions for numbers one through three say draw lines to match each of the following with its correct description or example. Remember, description means words, example means numbers. So number one, like fractions. Well, we know that like fractions are fractions with the same denominator. So for example, three-fourths and one-fourth are like fractions because they both have a denominator of four. Like fractions so show part of the same whole. They are not equivalent because three-fourths is a lot more than one-fourth, but they show part of the same whole. Number two, a mixed number. For this one, we have an example. Five and three-fourths is a mixed number because we have a whole number part, the five, and we have a fraction part, the three-fourths. Number three, simplest form. Simplest form is the form a fraction is written in when the numerator and the denominator have no common factor other than one. So we can look at three-fourths and one-fourth, and we can tell right away that they are both in simplest form because three and four are one digit away. So we know if our numerator and our denominator are one digit away, they're in simplest form. We also know if we have a unit fraction, which means our numerator is one, that it is in simplest form. Remember those other tricks. If you can't remember the other tricks, Skype me later and I will help you with those. And remember, if you can't use a trick, what should you do? List the factors. Okay, we'll move on to the next problem. Okay, so numbers four through seven, the directions say find each sum right in simplest form. Now this is where your extra sheet of paper comes in. I forgot to tell you, make sure that's out too. So you probably have it out. If not, get it out right now because you need to check that too. Remember, when we add and subtract mixed numbers, we have to convert the mixed numbers into improper fractions. Otherwise, there may be some regrouping that gets messed up and then we have the wrong answer. So make sure that you have converted all of these mixed numbers into um, improper fractions and then at the end you change that improper fraction into a mixed number. I will give you the opportunity to do that right now if you need to. Pause it, get out your pencil, and fix it, and then we will go over the answer. However, you should only be fixing numbers, um, the ones where you had to change mixed fractions into improper fractions. That means you may have to redo, but I'm allowing you to go ahead and do that with your pencil and eraser right now. Pause me, fix it, and then come back and check. As soon as you come back to check, pencils and erasers get put away, red pen comes back out. Go ahead and pause me and do that right now. If you already did it, Good job, let's keep going. Okay, so number four, we have one and five tenths plus three tenths. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and convert one and five tenths into an improper fraction. To do that, we start with the denominator, which is 10, and then we multiply it by the whole number, which is one. 10 times 1, of course, equals 10. Now we have to add the numerator, which is 5. 10 plus 5 is 15. So now 
we have our new numerator. Our denominator does not change, so that means our improper fraction is 15 tenths. 3 tenths is not a mixed number, it's not an improper fraction, so we can just leave it as is. 3 tenths. So now we have 15 tenths plus 3 tenths. We can do this math easily in our heads. We know when we add like fractions, we add the numerator, and then the denominator stays the same. So step one, add the numerators. 15 plus 3 is 18. Step two, the denominator stays the same. So we have 18 tenths. Remember, we don't ever simplify improper fractions. Now, we can't leave our answer as an improper fraction, so we have to change it. Remember, to change an improper fraction into a mixed number, you divide the numerator by the denominator. So we're going to go back to our separate sheet of paper, and we're going to show that division. The 18 goes inside the bracket, because that is the number that is being divided. The 10 goes outside of the bracket, because that's the number of groups it's being divided into. We know that 10 goes into 18 once without going over. 1 times 10 is 10. 18 minus 10 is 8. So that means our answer is uh, 18 divided by 10 is 1 remainder 8. To get our whole number, for our mixed number, we take the quotient without the remainder, which is 1, so that is our whole number. The numerator is our remainder. The denominator stays the same. Now we're not quite done yet because we have to check for simplest form. We can tell right away that 8 tenths is not in simplest form because both numbers are even. That means they both have a, a fact, they both have the factor of 2 in common. We can think of the factors 8 and 10 in our heads, and we know that the greatest common factor is 2. So we're going to divide the numerator and the denominator each by 2 to get our answer in simplest form. Do not forget that you had to bring the whole number over number does not change when we put in simplest form. And then we write our fraction part in simplest form. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So that means our final answer is 1 and 4 fifths. Make sure you're correcting if you need to. If you did not show your work, go ahead and do that with your red pen right now. Okay, now we have, we're on to number 5. We have 8 and 8 twelfths plus 1 and 1 twelfth. Both of these are mixed numbers, so we're going to have to change both of them. So let's go to our separate sheet of paper and check to make sure. Number 5. So first, we have to change 8 and 8 twelfths. So we take the denominator, which is 12. We multiply it by our uh, whole number, which is 8. 12 times 8 is 96. Then we add our numerator, which is 8. This is one where you may need to count up. Don't You don't have to set it up, up and down. Just count up. Use your fingers if you need to. 96 plus 8 is 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104. So our new... <coughs> Our new numerator is 104. And our denominator stays the same. We're going to bring down our plus sign. Now we have to change 1 and 1 12 into an improper fraction. So again, start with the denominator, multiply it by the whole number. 12 times 1 is 12. Add the numerator. 12 plus 1 is 13. So our new um, numerator is 13, denominator stays the same. Remember the steps for adding like fractions. Step 1, add the numerators. 104 plus 13 is 117. The step 2, the denominator stays the same. So we have 117 twelfths. Can't leave our answer as a, a mixed number, I'm sorry, as an improper fraction. So now we need to do division to change that. This may, now this is a double digit um, divisor.
but we know it, we can use basic facts to solve it. So let's go over to our separate sheet of paper and divide 117 by 12. We know based on basic facts that uh, 12 goes into 117 nine times, sorry, nine times 12 is 108. 117 minus 108, well, let's just count up. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 is 9. So that means 117 divided by 12 is 9, remainder 9. Now, our whole number is our quotient without the remainder. Our numerator is our remainder. And our denominator stays the same. So that means 8, eight and 8 twelfths plus 1 and 1 twelfths is 9 and 9 twelfths. However, it's not the simplest form. We know that 9 and 12 have a greatest common factor of 3. So we need to divide the numerator and the denominator each by 3. Bring over our whole number. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So our final answer is 9 and 3 fourths. Okay, make sure you're correcting. Let me draw a line here so that we can see which one's which, and I will do that right now. And now let's move on to number 6. We have 5 and 1 fourth plus 3 and 1 fourth. Remember, let's, uh, we have to change our mixed numbers into improper fractions. So, 5 and 1 fourth, we take the denominator, multiply it by the whole number, but 4 times 5 is 20. Then we add the numerator, 20 plus 1 is 21. So our new numerator is 21. The denominator stays the same, so we have 21 fourths. Now, 3 and 1 fourth, we take the, den the denominator, which is 4, Multiply it by the whole number, which is 3. 4 times 3 is 12. Then we add the numerator, which is 1. 12 plus 1 is 13. And so our new numerator is 13. Denominator stays the same. So now we have 21 fourths plus 13 fourths. Step 1 of adding like fractions, 21 plus 13 is 34. Step two is the denominator stays the same. So we have 34 fourths. That's an improper fraction. We can't leave our answer like that. So we're going to go back to our separate sheet of paper and divide. We have 34 divided by 4. 4 goes into 34 eight times. 8 times 4 is 32. 34 minus 32 is 2. So that means 34 divided by 4 is 8 remainder 2. Now, for our whole number, <coughs> in our mixed number, we take the quotient without the remainder, which is 8. Our numerator is our remainder, which is 2, and our denominator stays the same. We have another one that's not in simplest form. We know that the uh, greatest common factor of 2 and 4 is 2, because here's one of those tricks. If your numerator is a factor of your denominator, then your numerator is the greatest common factor. Don't forget to bring over the whole number. 2 divided by 2 is, oops, I'm sorry. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So our final answer is 8 and 1 half. Okay, moving on to number 7. Don't forget, I may be going a little fast. So if I am, just pause, watch it again, whatever you need to do. If you have any questions as we're working, comment on this YouTube video. I may not be, answer, be able to answer right away, but I may be able to answer before uh, 1 p.m. Okay, I know that I told you to convert all of these to improper fractions, and I told you to go back and convert to improper fractions if you did not do that. I just realized, number seven, we have, we've barely touched on how to do the division that will be required to get back to a mixed number. 
So if you did, if you converted to improper fractions and you got this answer, excellent. If not, that's okay because what we're going to do is we're just going to go back and I'm going to show you just that way that we first learned. Um, where we just take the mixed number part and then we add it and then we take the uh, fraction part and then we add that separately and come up with a mixed number. The rest of them we can do. This one I just realized we barely touched on that division so we're just going to show it this way. So we can do this because we don't have to regroup. We can't always rely on, ha on not being able, on uh, not having to regroup. So this one, we can just do it this way because we don't have to regroup. So first, we're going to take the whole numbers. We have 7 and 2. We're going to add the 7 and 2 to get 9. And now we have the fraction part. We have uh, 20 hundredths and we have 40 hundredths. We're going to use our, uh, the steps for adding like fractions. So step one is add the numerators. 20 plus 40 is 60. The denominator stays the same, so we have 100. So right now we have 9 and 60 hundredths. We know that 60 hundredths is not in simplest form. First of all, they're both even. Second of all, they're both factors of at least 5 and 10, but these, this is a tough one, so we're going to have to list the factors. So 60, we know we're going to do a factor rainbow. We have 1 and we have 60. Then we know we have 2 and we have 30. You may have had to do a little bit of division to the side, that's okay. We know we have 3 and 20. Let's check 4 because I can't remember off the top of my head. Let's see, does 4 go into 60? Well, 4 goes into 6 once, 1 times 4 is 4, 6, <coughs> excuse me, 6 minus 4 is 2, bring down the 0, 4 goes into 25 times, 5 times 4 is 20, 20 minus 20 is 0, so we have no remainder, that means 4 is a factor of, of 60 because you can multiply it by 15. So we have 4 and we have 15. We know 6, that now we're in the basic facts, 6 times 12, <coughs> let's see, 7, no, oh, I'm sorry, not 6 times 12, 5 times 12, sorry, 5 times 12, and now we have 6 times 10. We know 7, 8, and 9 are not factors because there are no basic facts with 7, and 9, 7, 8, 9 that equal 60. Now we've met in the middle, so we know these are the factors of 60. 100, we know the factors of 100 because of all of our coins. There are 100 pennies, so that means 1 times 100. If we had 50 cent pieces, there are two 50 cent pieces, so we know that. We know there's not, there's no threes. We know there are four quarters. We know that we can have 20 nickels. And we know that we can have 10 dimes. So now we've met in the middle. So there are factors of 100. If we look, our common factors are one, two, four, five, 10 and 20, our greatest common factor is 20. So that means we're going to divide our numerator and our denominator each by 20. Don't forget to bring over that whole number. 60 divided by 20 is 3. 100 divided by 20 is 5. So our final answer is 9 and 3 fifths. Okay, we're going to move on to the subtraction. Okay, so now we're on to the next section where we're subtracting. The directions for numbers 8 through 11 say find each difference, write in simplest form. So, again, we are going, you need to make sure that you have converted to improper fractions 
except for number 11 because we're going to end up in the same situation that we did before. If you already did number 11 and you converted and you did well, good job. Um, okay, so number 8. We have 5 and 7 eighths minus 3 and 2 eighths. So first step, we're going to convert to improper fractions. So 5 and 7 eighths, we take the denominator, multiply it by the whole number to get 40. Add the numerator, our answer is 47. So 5 and 7 eighths is equal to 47 eighths. Bring down our subtraction symbol. Now for our next fraction, we take the denominator, multiply it by the whole number to get 24. Add the numerator to get 26, so 3 and 2 eighths is equivalent to 26 eighths. Now we can do that subtraction. You can set it up to the side, but we can look really quickly and see that we don't have any regrouping to do, so we can just go by place value. 7 minus 6 is 1. 4 minus 2 is 2. Our denominator stays the same, so we have 21 eighths. Can't leave it as an improper fraction, so let's go to our separate sheet of paper and do our division. 21 divided by 8. 8 goes into 21 2 times. 2 times 8 is 16. 21 minus 16. There is regrouping here, but let's just count back. 21 minus 16. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 is 5. So that means our answer is 2 remainder 5. Our whole number is the quotient without the remainder, so we have 2. Our numerator is the remainder, which is 5. Our denominator stays the same. We finally come to one that we do not have to simplify because we know 5 is prime, our numerator of 5 is prime, and it is not a factor of our denominator, so that means it's in simplest form. Okay, number 9. We have 7 and 2 thirds minus 1 and 1 third. So, let's convert first. I'll draw my line. We're going to take our denominator, multiply it by our whole number to get 21. Then we add our numerator to get 23. So we have 23 thirds. Then we take our other fraction, we take the denominator, multiply it by the whole number to get 3, add our numerator, and we have 4. So we have 23 thirds minus 4 thirds. We can count back for this, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19. Our answer is 19 thirds, but we can't leave it as an improper fraction. So. 3 goes into 19 6 times. 6 times 3 is 18. 19 minus 18 is 1. <coughs> so our answer is 6 remainder 1. Our whole number is the quotient without the remainder. So we've got 6. Our numerator is our remainder, which is 1. Our denominator stays the same, so our answer is 6 and 1 third. Again, we know it's already in simplest form because one-third is a unit fraction. Unit fractions are always in simplest form. Okay, number 10. We can do this division when we get to it because we're going to have basic facts. Okay, so we have 9 and 11 twelfths minus 4 and 1 twelfth. So let's convert 9 and 11 twelfths. Take the denominator. Multiply it by the whole number to get 108. Add the numerator. 108 plus 11 is 119. Our new numerator is 119. Denominator stays the same. Now 4 and 1 twelfth. We'll take the denominator. Multiply it by the whole number, which is 48. Add the numerator. 48 plus 1 is 49. So we have 119 twelfths minus 49 twelfths. This one we will have to do some regrouping. Excuse me, we can't count up or count back. So let's go ahead and do our subtraction to the side. We'll do it right here. We have 119 
minus 49, nine, times, nine minus nine is zero. We can't do one minus four, but we don't really have to regroup because even if we regroup and we take uh, one away from the hundreds place and then give it to the tens place to, create, to have 11 minus four, well, we still have the same thing, 11 minus four. So we didn't really have to regroup, but I just did it. So 11 minus four is seven. That means 119 twelfths minus 49 twelfths is 70 twelfths. That's an improper fraction, so we have to do the division. We can do this division because we know basic facts. We know because of basic facts that 12 goes into 70 five times without going over. Five times 12 is 60. 70 minus 60 is 10. Our remainder is less than our divisor. So that means the answer is five remainder 10. <coughs> Remember, for mixed numbers, we take the quotient without the remainder, which is five. For the numerator, we take the remainder, which is 10, and our denominator stays the same. Now we have a fraction that's not in simplest form again because we know they're both even numbers. We know because of our basic facts that the greatest common factor is two. So we divide the numerator and the denominator each by two. Don't forget to bring that whole number over because it does not change. 10 divided by two is five. 12 divided by two is six. So our final answer is five and five sixths. Now we have number 11, three and 60 hundredths minus one and 20 hundredths. This is another one that if we converted, we would end up with division that you guys don't quite know how to do yet, which is okay. So, and uh, just by looking at it, I can tell that we won't have to regroup. <coughs> so we'll go ahead and solve it the way we solved number seven. So. Let's take the whole numbers first and do the subtraction. Three minus one is two. Now we'll subtract the fraction parts. We know step one, subtract the numerators as you normally would. 60 minus 20 is 40. And then the denominator stays the same. So we have two and 40 hundredths. This is, we know it's not in simplest form. So we need to um, find the greatest common factor so we can divide. This isn't necessarily an easy one, so we need to list factors. We already have the list factors of 100 here, so we'll just list the factors of 40. This one we can do, um, we can almost do uh, basic facts for almost all of the factors. We know 1 and 40. We know 2 is a factor because it's an even number. Now, if you did not know exactly what to multiply by, you may have had to do the division to the side, but we can kind of think of our basic facts and patterns, and we know two times two is four. So if we add a zero after the two, we get two times 20. Three, let's check. Three goes into four once. One times three is three. Four minus three is one. Bring down the zero, three goes into 10, three times, three times three is nine, 10 minus nine is one, which means we have a remainder, so that means three is not a factor. Four, well now we're into basic facts. Four times 10, we know five is a factor because five times eight, we know six is not a factor, because there is no basic fact times six that equals 40, and we know seven is not a factor for the same reason. Now we have met in the middle, so we found all our factors. If we look, we have one, two, four, five, 10, and 20 in common, and again, our greatest common factor is 20, so we're gonna divide by 20. Remember, the whole number stays the same. Do not forget that part. 40 divided by 20 is 2. 100 divided by 20 is 5. So our final answer is 2 and 2 fifths. Okay, so now you should be turned to the back and we're going to do these word problems. Remember some of the ones on the screen are going to be different from what you have on your paper but I've got the paper right here, so I know exactly what is the same and what is not. 
Um, number 12 is the same, so we'll go ahead and look at that first. Isabella has two and one-fourth oranges. Colleen has one, as, I'm sorry, three and one-fourth oranges. How many oranges do they have all together? So if we look at this question, we can see the word all together, which means we're probably going to be adding. We can tell by this question that we are taking Isabella's oranges and we are combining them with Colleen's oranges to create a larger amount of oranges. So remember, we have to write an equation on the line. So we have two and one fourth plus three and one fourth. If you did not have your equation, go ahead and write your equation with your red pen right now. Now, because we're adding mixed numbers, we need to convert them to improper fractions. Now, I know you're probably saying, but Ms. Follis, there's no regrouping. We can just do this without having to do improper fractions. However, the best way to do it is to use improper fractions in case you come across one that does need regrouping. So, let's go to our separate sheet of paper. And we have number 12. First, we need to convert 2 and 1 fourth. So we take our denominator, multiply it by our whole number to get 8. Add the numerator to get 9. Our new numerator is 9. Denominator stays the same. So we have 9 fourths, now 3 and 1 fourth. Again, we take the denominator, multiply it by the whole number to get 12. We add the numerator to get 13. So we have 13 fourths. Now we're just going to add. Step one, add our numerators. 9 plus 13 is 22. Step two, our denominator stays the same. So we have 22 fourths. We can't leave our answer as an improper fraction. So we'll go over to our separate sheet of paper and divide 22 by 4. 4 goes into 22 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20. 22 minus 20 is 2. So, <coughs> remember, our whole number comes from the quotient without the remainder. The numerator is our remainder. The denominator stays the same. So we have 5 and 2 fourths. We can't leave it like that because our, problem, our, our instructions told us to write in simplest form. But we know that 2 is the greatest common factor because our numerator is a factor of our denominator. Don't forget to bring over your whole number. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So that means Isabella and Colleen have 5 and 1 half oranges all together. If you did not write your unit or you have the incorrect unit, make sure you use your red pen to write the correct unit. <coughs> okay, now let's move on to 13, which I think is a little bit different than what you have. Let me check. Liam had five and seven eighths cups of flour. He used two and three eighths cups of flour to make bread. We don't have this part, so we're gonna cross that out. And then we have how much flour does Liam have left? Okay, there are two things that we can look at to figure out what operation we're doing. First of all, we have the word used. If you use something, you end up with less than what you started with so that gives us a hint that we are doing subtraction. Have left is also something that tells us we are going to subtract. So now we need to figure out which one goes first. We know it's 5 and 7 eighths, both because it's the larger fraction and also because that's what he started with. It said he had this much. So that means that's what he started with. Then we're going to subtract. 2 and 3 eighths to get our answer. Just like before, first we need to convert to mix to an improper fraction just in case there's regrouping. So we're going to go over to our separate sheet of paper 
and number 13, we take the denominator, multiply it by the whole number to get 40, then we add the numerator to get 47, so we have 47 eighths. Now for our other fraction, we take the denominator, multiply it by the whole number to get 16, add the numerator to get 19, so we have 47 eighths minus 19 eighths. Now that's another one where we're gonna have to do some regrouping and we can't really count up or count back. So let's do our subtraction over here. 47 minus 19. We, we can't do seven minus nine, so we take one away from the tens place, that becomes a three. We give it to the ones place, that becomes 17. 17 minus nine is eight. Three minus one is two. So we have 28 eighths. Now that's an improper fraction, so we can't leave it like that. We divide 28, our numerator, by our denominator, by eight. Eight goes into 28 three times. Three times eight is 24. 28 minus 24 is four. So we have three remainder four. Our whole number is the quotient without the remainder, our numerator is the remainder, and our denominator stays the same. We know that's not in simplest form because our numerator is a factor of our denominator. That also tells us that the numerator is the greatest common factor. Don't forget to bring over the whole number. Now we're going to do our division. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So that means Liam has three and one half cups of flour left. Make sure you have that unit. Make sure you have the correct unit. Okay, now number 14. This one also might be a little different, but I've got it right here, so I'll be checking as we go. Audrey ran two and one six miles yesterday. Today, she ran one and three six miles. We don't have this part in our book. And the question is, how many miles did Audrey run all together? Okay, we know when we see that word all together, it means we're gonna end up with a larger answer than what we started with. So we're gonna be adding, because we will be combining the mile she ran yesterday and the mile she ran today to see how much we have all together. When we combine, <coughs> we add. So we know our equation, when we add, it doesn't really matter which one comes first because of the commutative property. So we'll just put it in order. We have two and one sixth plus one and three sixths. Let's go over to our separate sheet of paper and we will um, find the improper fractions. So for the first add end, we take the denominator, multiply it by the whole number to get 12, then we add the numerator to get 13, so we have 13 sixths. And for our second add end, again, we take the denominator, multiply it by the whole number to get six, and then add the numerator to get nine. So we have 13 six plus nine six. Now we can just count up because we're close enough. So 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. We have 22 six. Can't leave it like that because it's an improper fraction. So we'll divide the numerator by the denominator. Six goes into 22 three times. 22 minus 18 is 22, 21, 20, 19, 18. So we have three, remainder four. Our whole number is the quotient without the remainder. Our 
numerator is the remainder, and our denominator stays the same. We know that this is not in simplest form because 4 and 6 are both even, and we know that the greatest common factor is 2. Don't forget to bring over the whole number. Now we'll simplify the fraction. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that means Audrey ran 3 and 2 thirds miles all together. Make sure that you have that unit. Okay, number 15, last one. Woo. Number 15. Isaac's paper plane threw 5 and 2 twelfth feet. Lillian's paper plane flew 5 and 5 twelfths feet. How much farther did Lillian's paper airplane fly? Okay, when we look at this, when we see something like how much farther, we know that one is going to be larger than the other and we're trying to find the difference. So that means we are subtracting. <coughs> now when we write our equation, this is an example of when we cannot write it in order. Otherwise, we would have 5 and 2 twelfths minus 5 and 5 twelfths. We can't do 2 minus 5. And our whole number is the same. So that means 5 and 5 twelfths is larger than 5 and 2 twelfths. We cannot take a larger number away from a smaller number. So this is a case where we would have to look at which piece of the problem is greater. 5 and 5 twelfths is greater, so that means that goes first, and then we subtract 5 and 2 twelfths, so we have 5 and 5 twelfths minus 5 and 2 twelfths. Well, let's go over to our separate sheet of paper and turn it into improper fractions. Number 15, we take the, our first, we take the minuend, which is 5 and 5 twelfths, we multiply the denominator by the whole number to get 60. Then we add <coughs> excuse me, the numerator to get 65. So we have 65 twelfths. Bring down our subtraction sign and now let's take the subtrahend. We multiply the denominator by the whole number to get 60 again. Then we add the numerator to get 62. So now we have 65 twelfths minus 62 twelfths. We can do this, these numbers are very close, so we can do this in our head. 65 minus 62 is 3. Our denominator stays the same. We have 3 twelfths. That is not a mixed number. It is not an improper fraction. When it's not an improper fraction, this is just a regular fraction, we do not have to turn it into a mixed number. We have 3 twelfths, but we just still have a problem because 3 twelfths is not in simplest form. <coughs> if we look over here, we don't even have 3 twelfths, so that tells us right away there's something we need to do. In this case, it is simplify it. We know that 3 is a factor of 12, so that means our numerator is our greatest common factor. 3 divided by 3 is 1, 12 divided by 3 is 4, so we have 1 fourth, that is an option. So Lillian's paper plane through, flew 1 fourth of a foot further than Isaac's paper plane. Okay, good job guys. Okay, now that you're done with the check my progress, if you have a stapler or a paper clip, staple or paper clip your extra sheet of paper to your um, check my progress. If you do not have a stapler or um, a paper clip, all you need to do is stack them with your extra sheet of paper behind and your check my progress in front, and then just make a dog ear, and that will help them to stay together. Then put them in whatever folder that you're keeping all of your completed work in that will be brought when it's time to pick up a new packet, because I will be looking for this when I get all of your completed work on uh, next Monday the 30th. Okay guys, good job, that was the first one, that was the first lesson done. Let's move on to reading. <coughs>